It is uh, so excited to be back with you this evening. And, um, you know, last week we talked about a love relationship with God. And this week we are going to talk about a love relationship among each other. And so we're going to start right off in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 2 in the Living Bible. So we're looking at the fact that <clears throat> we have a love relationship with God, but the, 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 the should I say, the evidence that we really, really love God is that we love each other. And so we're going to see this as we move through these scriptures. All right, 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 2, the Living Bible says, If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he is God's Son, and your Savior. Look at that there. So, so you believe that Jesus, uh, believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he's God's son, and that Jesus Christ is our Savior. He says, then you are a child of God. So basically what he's saying, if you confess Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, then, then you belong to him. We are his sons and daughters, okay, in the kingdom. And then he says, and all who love the Father love his children too. So when we're saved, we love God. So when we get saved, we develop a love relationship with, uh, with God. We love him because he saved us. We love him because he delivered us. We love him because he's our father. Uh, we love him because he created us. But we also, he says, we also love each other. So that means we understand each other as brothers and sisters in the Lord. So when I give my life to Christ, you give your life to Christ. We love the same God and we love each other. That's very important to understand that we love the same God and we love each other. Because the proof that we love the same God is that we love each other. And we cannot love each other. We cannot love God without loving each other. And so if you don't love each other, that's problem an indication that you do not love God. He says, so, verse, so, so you can find out how much you love God's children, your brothers and sisters in the Lord, by how much you love and obey God. Oh, so then there's a degree to loving. So sometimes we try to figure out, well, you know, why, why, why people acting up? Why they don't love like they should? Why they don't, you know, why we don't get along like we should? Why, why people in the kingdom can't get along? Well, it's not that they have a problem with you. We don't have a problem with each other as such. We got a problem with God. Our relationship is that we have some deficiencies with God. And when you have a love deficiency with God, you're going to have a love deficiency with your brother and sister. So people can talk about, you know, they can, they can jump up and down. I love the Lord and he did this for me and such and such and such and all of this. And God, God hear all that. And, but the first thing God is listening, or should, say, should I say the first thing God is watching, he's not listening to what you say. He's watching how you treat one another. And so, so don't expect love from anyone. Can, can, can I just, I, I need you to really, really, really listen to this statement. Do not. And this is where we get tripped up. Because we figure everybody love the Lord like we love him. We feel like everybody, you know, feel what we feel. And, been, you know, if you've been saved any length of time, we feel like, you know, they should be saying certain things, acting a certain way. You love the Lord. You love the Lord because of what he's done for you. You love the Lord because he died for you. You love the Lord because, you know, you just appreciate him. You love the Lord because of what he's doing for you, what he did for you yesterday, what he did for you to woke you up this morning and got you in your right mind and had allowed you to put one foot before the other one. And you had enough common sense and you had enough uh, uh, initiative and you had enough uh, uh, wherewithal and balance and all of this stuff to drive yourself here without having an accident and you stopped at the red lights and stopped at the stop sign and you understood the signals and all of this kind of stuff and you watched it and, and, and so you figure like man that's just a, such a blessing to be there and to have that uh, a kind of relationship with God I just glorify him I just thank him and I just praise him and you think everybody else think like you and the problem is this. The problem is you should not expect love from anyone who does not love and obey God. So the problem with them is they don't love and obey God like you. They don't. They're not grateful like you are. They don't know your story. And a lot of times God deliver. I've seen God deliver folk and time and time again. And the way they show him love is that they get back into trouble again. <laughs> they continue to do the things that he tells them not to do. 
And so don't expect anyone, any love from anyone who does not love and obey God. So you can say this. If a person is not acting right, if they're treating you wrong, they don't really love you like they're supposed to. They're not loving you like God says they love you, then should love you, then, then they're probably not loving and obeying God. As I take you to John chapter 14, verse 15 in the Amplified, Jesus says something. He says something really, really profound. A lot of times people read scriptures and they just run through them. In this scripture, everybody knew it. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, just do what I say. And we just, we run through that. I mean, that's, that's pretty, that's self-explanatory. And we understand that and we move on. But we got to pause here. Jesus said, if you love me, if you really love me, you're going to do something. He said, if you really love me, you will obey my commandments. Hmm. So there are a lot of people talking about they love the Lord. And then they don't obey him. They don't read the word. They are illiterate, ignorant of his word. And so they substitute some things in this scripture. And so you have to understand, you, you have to understand why people don't love each other is because they don't really love the Lord. Because they got this verse all mixed up. Notice what he did not say. And sometimes you have to read scripture and, and see, say, okay, what is it that he did not say? Because a lot of times people are doing what he did not say. And, they're, and, they're, and they are substituting it for love. All right? So Jesus said, if you really love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, tell somebody else I love you. If you love me, Ursha. If you love me, preach in the pulpit. If you love me, be the best sound guy you can be. If you love me, sing melodious praises out of your voice. If you love me, uh, 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 dress good. If you love me, treat people good. If you love me, uh, make sure that you are a good neighbor. If you love me, make sure that you respect the boss at work. If you love me, make sure you come to church. If you love me, pay your tithes and offering. If you love me, make sure that, that, that you are polite and that you are courteous and so on and so forth. That ain't what he said. And a lot of people are doing all of those things. But he says, if you love me, really love me, obey me, keep my commandment. So God is not concerned about all the things that you do. He's concerned about you keeping his commandment because the evidence of you really loving him is that you obey him. See how we got it mixed up? And that's why people are doing things in the kingdom participating in the kingdom and still, can I say it my way? Still acting up. Just acting crazy. Just acting like they're not saved. Just act because, because they, have, they, they don't understand the commandments of God. They don't understand the commandments of Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. So you have to understand that, 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 that you got to, you got, so, 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 so you cannot be dodging what his commandments are and dodging the word of God. And every chance you get, make an excuse not to hear from God because if you can't hear from him, if you don't understand what he's telling you, then there's no way to obey him. How are you going to obey instructions in which you have not heard? How are you going to walk in a way in which you do not know? How are you going to have victory in areas where you don't have the wherewithal and the power and the resources connected to you in order to have that victory? So he says, if you love, he, look, he says, if you love me, keep my commandment. If you love Jesus, you will obey his instructions and guidelines that he gives us to love one another. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, he said, you got to love one another like I told you to. First John. Chapter three, verse 18. Now we're going to the regular amplifier. We're not in the classified amplifier. We're in the regular amplifier for this one. Notice first John three, 18. The regular amplifier says little children. 
says, believers, dear ones, let us not love merely in theory, with word or with tongue, giving lip service to compassion. So, so, so if you're up in the church testifying, telling me I love everybody, and, 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 and you don't treat anybody with respect, and you want to have your way, and you're full of pride, uh, the Holy Ghost said you need to sit down. Not only sit down, but close your mouth. See, it's amazing when the anointing is going. It's, it, when the anointing is flowing and, and, the, and the Spirit of God is in the room, boy, people say so much stuff. They say all the right things. You know, because they, 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 you know, they, they're excited. They say all the right things. They know the right things to say. And these are the same people that, that won't even speak to you when they, when they sit down uh, uh, next to you on the, on the pew. And so, the, and so the Word of God is saying, look, let us not love merely, merely in theory, you, you know, you know, you, you, you know love because you, you know the different types of love. You know eros, you know uh, 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 theos, you, 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 you know uh, storage, you know agape, you know phileo. You know, you, know, you know all the definitions of love and so on and so forth. You know what they mean and you can put them in a sentence and you can use them for an example, but you can't love nobody. Every time somebody gets next to you, you get on your nerve. You don't want to talk to folk. You have bad days. You have days that where you nobody know who you are. You have days where you have a certain persona and a certain body language where folk know not to even speak to you because you're going to go off. But you just got through talking about how, how you love the Lord. You can't love God without loving your brothers and sisters in the Lord. And Jesus said, if you're going to love me, then you got to keep my commandments. And so we have to understand. He said, John said, look, little children, he said, look, don't, you, can't, you, you don't love just merely by, in words or tongue. And see, you have, to understand, you have to watch this. When folks say, see, sometimes the devil use people for a smoke screen. They'll tell you they love you because they want to beat you out of something. They'll tell you they love you because they're getting ready to deceive you. They'll tell you they love you because they're getting ready to lie to you. They'll say they love you because that's, that's traditional. That's what folks say. You got to be careful. Can, can I just talk to, to husband and wives right quick? You got to be careful how you throw the word love around. Baby, honey, I love you. And, and all the time, you putting them in an early grave. All the time, you just messing over them. All the time, you got them stressed out. All the time, they don't know what you're going to do. All the time, you're not managing money. You're not doing anything but causing problems and headaches and heartaches and making poor decisions. And you got an uproar and disunity all over the place. And you spread disbelief out of your mouth. And you always negative, And you can't be pleased. I know who, oh my God. I bet you they're saying, well, you can love me a little less. I can do without all of that. You look, you, you can't you can't tell somebody I love you and, 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 and let those words make up for all the stuff that you don't do. Because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So he's saying, if you love me, you got to do something, baby. So if you love your husband or your wife or your kid, you can't just say it. You got to do something. You got to show it, man. And you got to show it over and over and over again. And guess when they need you to love them the most? Not when you are happy. Not when they're doing everything right. They need you to love them when they've made a mistake. They need you to love them when they know that they haven't done right. They need you to love them when, 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 when they don't feel right and when they've said the wrong thing and when they've made bad decisions that's when they need you to they need you to love them don't make talking about i love you and and you and, and you don't even sympathize with my pain Tell me i love you i've been asking you three weeks to fix the toilet you talking about you love me So he says, look, don't, 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 don't be talking about you love me, give, giving lip service to compassion. Some folks can say, I love you with so much compassion and feelings and emotions. You ever seen folks talking about I love you, they crying all the time, they just crying. They just talking about I love you and they crying and they, you know, and you think, oh, they really love me. Next thing you know, they done stabbed you in the back. 
See, love is what love does. Love is being obedient to the word of God. People, I don't care what they say with their mouth, they are incapable of loving you when they do not obey the word of God. They are incapable. They have the ability. I didn't say they weren't able. I said they are incapable because they don't have the love of God flowing through them because they are not obedient enough to have a love relationship with him so that they can love. He says, don't just love, but in action. And in, he said, but in action, this is how you love. You love in action and in truth. You love in practice and in sincerity because practical acts of love are more than words. Oh, I love that. Hmm, how do you love? In action and in truth. So that means you got to do something. Oh, yeah, you got to do something. Not say something. <laughs> Not shout. Do something. In action, in actually what you do, in truth, that's mean, that, means, that means doing it right. According to the word of God. According to uh, the directions and the ways of God. All right. And so and so as Christians in the kingdom, we must practice loving. And that's another thing. We say love, but we don't practice it. Tell you all day, baby, I love you. I love you. Oh, man, I love you. Man, I love you. But we don't practice it. I love the Bible because it breaks it right down and it tells us exactly what we should do and how we should do it. So so notice he says, because practical acts. Because practical acts of love are more than words. So let's look at this thing of practicing love. Practicing love means to apply love. It means to carry out love. So God is love. He's on the inside of us. How does God, how does Jesus respond? How does he act? What does he say? What does he do? What does Jesus do? So we have to practice love. Love is not something, even though we have the capacity and the ability, love is not something that just flows and we just do it. We have to practice it. And even when we see the fruit of love and the fruit of the spirit, love tree, joy, peace, love, long, joy, peace, long suffering, patience, we have to practice it. And even when we practice it, it evades us, it eludes us, it gets away from us, it escapes us because we are not perfect. And so we have to go back and find it again and go back and stir it up. It's still in us, but we have to stir it up again. And we have to go back to the foundation and we have to go back to scripture and we have to go back and remind ourselves that this is what love is. Because as we go through and grow through certain situations and trials and stuff that come against us, a little love just drips out of us. The next thing you know, our love tank is empty and we don't have any love. So that so 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 what John is saying, he said, man, we got to practice love. That means we got to apply love. That means we got to um, carry out love. We got to live out love. We have to rehearse love. We have to repeat love over and over and over again. That's why you can't tell your wife or your kids or somebody you love them and, and think that's going to last for the rest of the year. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You got to practice love. You got to practice love. Practice doing what's in the best interest of people. You got to practice helping them. You have to practice or taking care of them. You have to practice forgiving them. You have to practice looking the other way. You have to practice. Let me tell you something about peace too. I mean, I'm telling you something about love. Love, you can always tell when love shows up because love uh, goes in the room or comes in the room or comes in a situation and it causes dissension to come back to peace. Where people are fighting and you got all this animosity and got all these attitudes and pride and all this foolishness going on. Love comes in and it soothes all of that and it, and it, and it, and it breaks it all up. And it puts it back together and the anointing of God begins to flow. Love soothes. Love is a salve. Love soothes. Love, uh, 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 love, love calms things down. Love causes you to rest. Love, you can always tell when love is around because there's peace. Oh, 
You can always tell when love is around because there's joy. You can always tell when love is in the midst and love is flowing because there's contentment. You can always tell what love is and love is moving and love is allowed because there's kindness and there's, oh, there's gentleness and there's forbearingness and there is patience oh there's so much patience going on because that's what love does love is patient love is kind love is not puffed up love thinketh no wrong love seeth no oh god love seeth no evil you can always tell when love is in the room because it's not about me it's about jesus christ and love has self-control Mm -hmm. Most people, most Christians with their disobedient selves will not practice love. They'll talk love, but they won't practice it. They'll find all kinds of ways to say I love you, but they won't do nothing. And part of that is our problem. Part of, the, part of, part of it is the problem uh, from leadership, those of us who have been walking with the Lord and mature in the Lord, we've been walking with the Lord for so long, uh, we fail to demonstrate what real love really is. We, we, we take the easy route. We like to talk love. We like to give flowers. Man, don't nobody care about no flowers if you done beat me down. I don't care. I want your flowers. Nobody want your flowers. You see this stuff on TV all the time, movies, you know, man, I'm beat the lady up and I mean, he don't physically beat her down. And, and, and then she go and, t you know, take care of herself and he want to come up in the house with some flowers. What are them flowers going to do? What's the flowers supposed to say? And then as soon as she gets, she, she, she say something he don't like, he, he beating on her again. So, so what has flowers done? See, words are like flowers. They ain't no good unless you are doing. You got to be practicing, man. You know, one thing my Holy Spirit showed me a long time ago, you know, my wife don't need to hear I love her. She need to see I love her. Amen. She need to see it, baby. She, she, she needs to see it. She needs to know that when things are not favorable or if she made a mistake or we're not in agreement, she needs to see the love of God coming through me. And the problem is, is most of our mature, mature saints, and I'm not talking about in age, I'm talking about as long as you've been walking with the Lord, most of us do not show love. We don't show it enough. And so those, those that are new, those that are, 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 don't, don't hear the word of God or don't have a relationship like we have or at the level that we have, they are confused because they don't see, they don't see the love of God that we're supposed to have. They don't see us walking out what we tell folk. They don't see us walking out what, what comes out of our mouth. And so they're confused. So you know, so you know what they do? When a, when a mature saint does not demonstrate love among the other saints, those in the kingdom, not just in the church, but in the kingdom, the other saints begin to adapt the ways of the world concerning love. They learn how to camouflage. They learn how to fake it. They learn how to say one thing and do another. They, and they, they ain't getting it from the world. They're getting it from those of us who are leaders in the church. Deacons and pastors get in a meeting and they're supposed to love each other and they end up fussing and cussing and threatening each other. Urshers, they can't get along on what they're going to say and, and how they're going to conduct the service as far as, you know, keeping everybody together. So they, they, so they you know, you, you got groups and choirs and praise team can't get along, don't know what to say to each other. Can, how in the world are you going to sing together but you don't, can't stand each other after you sing? What, what kind of love is that? That's crazy love to me. That's foolishness right there. See, see, and, and then see, see, a lot of people, a lot of people, they don't get the teaching of the word. You know how I can tell? Because they keep on acting up. You can always tell folk they ain't in the word. They ain't in the word because they keep on acting up. They keep on mistreating each other. They keep on saying the wrong thing. They keep on doing the things that not, they're not supposed to be doing. And they're saying they love God. You don't love God. You ain't even listening to the word. Evidently, you act like you don't. You act like you don't want the word. Remember, I said Jesus said, "If you really love me, keep my commandments. Not if you really love me, sing praises to me. If you really love me, preach my word. If you really love me, teach this thing and really study." He said, "If you love me, keep my commandments." And the first thing he says is that this is how men will know. I got to say this and then, then, then I, I'm going to have to come back. I'm going to have to come back. I'm going to have to. 
John 13, 34, you don't have to turn there, 13, 34, 35 in the Amplified. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you should love one another just as I have loved you, so should to love one another. He says in verse 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you love one another. How do people know that you're a disciple of the Lord? How do people know that you're a Christian? How do people know that you are God's son, God's daughter, God's representative. How do they know? How do they know how saved you are? How do they know if you love him? How do they know if you appreciate him? How do they know if you love everybody? How do they know? How does the world know? They know by the way they, by the way we treat each other. I'm going to come back next week and talk to you about a mandate that God has given me. Mm-hmm. Because let me tell you something, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be out of here. Those of us who are leaders in the kingdom, God expects for us to make sure that love is operating in the midst. And when it's not, he wants us to deal with it. Got to deal with it. So we just thank God for you listening. Please, listen to these teachings. Push the pause button. Pray, allow the Spirit of God to give to you what you need out of these teachings and instructions so that you can live a better life. Starting first, because I believe most of, most of the people that are listening to this are already Christians. So it's got to start with us first. Understanding the word, applying it to our own life first, and then demonstrate it before others and then encourage others thank you so much god bless you we shall see you next week